Assalamu alaikum friends, my name is Bilal Khan and today is my 59th video of DevOps. So in this video I am going to take a look at the tool that is called Helm and it is commonly used nowadays in Kubernetes and it is very useful. All right. So as you can see by this picture that it is similar to the Kubernetes picture. All right. So before discussing Helm, let's understand the common functionalities that are present in the Linux. All right. So these are some kind of functionalities that are common in Linux. So if you know about Linux, then you may also know about these kind of functionalities that I'm going to discuss it here. All right. So suppose you created a Linux machine in your uh, virtual server or your local machine. It may be a AWS, a GCP, Azure, or even your, in your local machine. All right. And these are the functionalities that will be used in your uh, Linux machine, like the package management, automated installation, Version, uh, version management, dependencies management, and removal functionality. So uh, let's take a look at the first of all package management. So the package management means to install the packages by using the commands like apt or yum etc. All right. So the, uh, these are the commands that will be used to install the packages in your Linux machine, and these commands will be called the package management commands. All right. So the second one is the uh, automated installation. So it means that it will install the packages automatically without the files moving manually. So in order to install the packages, you don't need to move the files and transfer the files from one place to another. Instead, the uh, Linux functionality that is the automated installation will do it for you and it will automatically transfer the files from one location to another in order to install the package. All right. The second, uh, third part is the version management. So it means that it will update the packages. If the new release of the package is present, then it will update the, uh, that package according to that uh, um, version. All right. And the fourth uh, functionality is the dependency management. So it means that it will install the dependencies that are required for a package to be installed. So if you install some kind of package, then the dependencies or the files will also be required with that package in order to run this package properly and smoothly. Without these dependencies, the package may not be installed properly or successfully. So you need to uh, take care of this and install the dependencies also in order to uh, install the package. All right. And the fifth functionality is the removal functionality. So it means that you can remove the packages and all the dependencies will be removed with it. All right. So if you remove this package, the dependencies will also be removed with it and you need to run this command of removal so that you can uh, remove all the packages and the dependencies that are related to it. All right. So I hope you understood this, uh, these kind of functionalities that are present in the Linux, but you need to also keep this in mind that the Helm is also performing these kind of functionality on its own. All right. So basically, what, I mo what do I mean by this? That the, these commands were specifically used for Linux, but now the Helm, has, uh, you, the Helm is using these commands for Kubernetes also. All right. So let's say that here is the package manager that is apt or yum. So the, these, uh, these package management commands are used for the Linux, but the Helm has introduced its own command that is called Helm also. All right, so the Helm install Jenkins, let's say the Helm install Nagios, and the Helm install other packages that you want to install, but that will be with the help of Helm command, not with the help of apt or yum command that is uh, present in the Linux. All right, so the Helm has introduced its own commands. So it will do the automated installation in Kubernetes. It will also do the version management in the Kubernetes if you want to install some kind of uh, packages in Kubernetes or in the ports or nodes or in the container uh, of an application. Then you can also inst install the updated version. And you can install the dependencies also in a, uh, in a container, in a port if you want to uh, by using this help command that will also uh, manage the Kubernetes. And it will remove the function packages and the dependencies also in Kubernetes if you want to. So basically, you need to understand these kind of functionalities that are present in Linux, but now the Helm has, uh, are, is using these kind of functionalities in Kubernetes also. So let's take a look at the definition that what is Helm. So Helm is a package manager. As you can see, that the package manager will perform the functionality of this package management that is apt or yum. All right, so Helm has introduced its own command that is called Helm. So Helm is a package manager that deals with the package management in Kubernetes. All right, 
So these commands were uh, specific to the Linux, but now the Helm is using these commands in the Kubernetes also. And it means to manage the manifest or YAML file, uh, creating them and managing the packages inside the YAML file. So we have discussed in the Kubernetes that you will, uh, you will be dealing with multiple YAML files in installing the packages or managing the packages or creating the packages. So now the Helm is used to manage the manifest files and create them and manage the packages inside that YAML file if you want to. So now you don't need to uh, write multiple YAML files or you don't need to m install the packages manually. Instead, what you will do that you will simply write the Helm command and it will manage those uh, packages and install those packages for you. In order to write them, it will be very difficult for you. So you just need to write the simple command and it will uh, install all the packages for you in one single command. And I will show you uh, in later on in this video that what is the functionality of the Helm and how it will do it properly. All right. So suppose you have two tire architecture in Kubernetes. One is front end and another one is the back end. All right. So the front end and back end, you know that the front end will be used to show the user and the back end will be used in order to uh, perform the functionalities on the back. All right. So let's take a look at the front end first. So suppose you created a deployment, a config map, or a service. These are the uh, services that are present in the front end, like deployment, config map, or service. So we will take a look uh, one by one at each of them. So in the front end, you created a deployment. Inside that deployment, the replicas are present, all right? So the replicas are present inside this deployment. And inside each of the ports that are present in the replica set, uh, the container will be present in these ports, all right? You may know about it. And each container will run an application, all right? And after that, you also need config map that will contain the configuration data inside the file, all right? And you also created a service YAML file that will tell in which port the application will run. All right. So these are the functionalities that the front end is performing. So now let's take a look at the back end. So you need a stateful set that will run the, uh, an application in the database. So in the back end, you perform some kind of functionalities like the stateful set, the secret, and the service. So the stateful set is used to run an application in the database. Uh, and you also need another YAML file to store the conf uh, confidential data, all right? So you also need another uh, YAML file that will uh, store the confidential information, and you also need a service YAML file that will uh, uh, tell the accessibility between the different ports outside the cluster and inside the cluster, all right? So basically, what do I mean by this diagram and in the back end and the front end is basically, as you can see, that these are the uh, YAML files. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these are the six uh, YAML files that you have created in these backend and frontend. But suppose if you are dealing with hundreds of YAML files, then it will be very difficult to do it manually in the Kubernetes. All right. So I'm just trying to show you as an example uh, that how the Helm will be useful in the Kubernetes. So basically, these are the six files that can be easily managed. But uh, let's say if there are hundreds of thousands of uh, YAML files that you want to manage, then how you can manage them, th that will be with the help of Helm. All right? So you may also, uh, you will be writing the YAML files every time. So that will be very difficult for you in the Kubernetes. So now the uh, Helm will uh, make this functionality easy for you. And I will show you how it will, be, uh, how it will become easy for you. So um, first the back end will be executed and then the result will be shown to you on the front end. All right, so we all know about this. So now let's take a look at the problems that we are facing in this kind of our structure, like in the back end and in the front end. So the first problem is that, that if you have one or two files, then it is easy to write the kubectl apply and then the file name with every file. All right, so there are six files. So you need to, if you want to apply those files, then you can write the kubectl apply command with each of the file and send it to the Kubernetes cluster. But if there are hundreds of files, then applying every file is not an easy task. All right, so let's, I have given you an example that there are only six files, but let's see if there are hundreds of YAML files, then it will be very uh, uh, difficult for you to apply each of the uh, file every time, like kubectl, uh, kubectl apply uh, file name one, file name two, file name three. So you are doing these tasks multiple times. 
so this will be very tedious for you so how to avoid this and what is the solution for this so the, to solve this problem helm comes comes into picture all right so it for this purpose the helm is performing these kind of functionality and it will make this process easy for you so to solve this problem of um, not using the kips util apply a command every time so the helm will come into picture and it will solve this problem problem for you so it will take all the yaml files of an application and consider it as a package all right so basically as you can see that this is the uh, front end uh, application and this is the uh, back end of an application and these are the six yaml files that are present in the back end and in the front end combined but what the helm will do the helm will combine these uh, six pack, uh, yaml files and the six configuration files into a single package all right so as you can see that to solve this problem com uh, help comes into picture it will take all the yaml files that are present either in the back end or in the front end it will take all of them and consider it as a package one package and then what will this package will do now there is no need to apply each of the file instead a package uh, that contains the file will be executed with one command all right so in the six uh, yaml files you need to execute the uh, keeps util apply command six times but what the helm will do the helm will consider these six files as one and it will pack them in a package and that, then after that it will only execute one command and all the uh, uh, yaml command will be executed at once all right so i hope you understood that these files will be executed at a one uh, in a, in a one package and the one for one package there will be only one command that will be executed all right so and now you don't need to write the kips util apply command six times or 10 times or uh, 20 times instead you just need to pack them and then after packing them what you will do that uh, you will only run the command once and it will execute all the yaml uh, com files for you all right so now there is no need to up apply each of the file instead a package that contains the file all right so the package it contains all the yaml files will be executed with one command all right so helm is a utility or the package manager that we have discussed previously and that will make the processes of kubernetes easy all right so now you don't need to write the keeps util every time so instead of writing the keeps util apply command every time of the kubernetes uh, now you will use the helm utility and it will use the command uh, it will make it easy for you to uh, run these uh, execute these yaml files so now instead of writing the apt or yum command write the helm all right so we have discussed earlier that you don't need to write the apt or yum instead you just need to write the helm all right so for this purpose the helm will um, will be used and it will be easy for you to perform the functionalities and the processes of the kubernetes easy all right so now let's take a look at the uh, helm and uh, helm chart what is the difference between each of them so helm creates a package in which all the manifest files are present and that package is called the helm chart all right so helm creates the package we have discussed that that package will contain all the manifest files all the yaml files of the back end and in the front end so all the uh, this package will contain the yaml files and in which all the manifest files are present all right and that package is called the helm chart simple as that all right so the package that will be contain the yaml file will be called the helm chart so a helm chart is a collection of manifest files that becomes a package all right so the mm, manifest file will become a package it means the YAML, uh, manifest file will be present in a package and that package will be called a helm helm chart all right so now you can easily deploy the helm chart or the package into the kubernetes cluster all right so before uh, helm there was a problem that you need to deploy each of the yaml file one by one like you need to first of all deploy this service then deploy this config map then deploy this uh, deployment after that you go to the service of the back end and deploy this and uh, after that deploy the secret and after that you deploy the data so you were doing this manually one by one but what the helm has done the helm will package them all of all of them and after that once uh, once these uh, yaml files are packaged then it will transfer the uh, package that package 
as at once to the Kubernetes. All right. So you don't need to manually do all the things one by one. Instead, it will pack them and uh, transfer it. All right. So um, let's take a look at the brief introduction of the Helm. So Helm is introduced first time in 2015. Helm 3 was released in November 2019. And I will show you what was the functionalities that were lacking in the Helm 2 and what are the functionalities that are now uh, the Helm 3 containing. All right, later on in this video. So uh, Helm 3 helps you manage the Kubernetes application with Helm charts, which helps you define, install, upgrade, and remove even the most complex Kubernetes application. All right, so we have discussed that how you can uh, manage the Kubernetes cluster and you can define it install it, upgrade this, and remove the packages in your Helm chart if you want to, even the uh, most complex Kubernetes application in your Helm chart, all right? So Helm is equivalent of uh, yum and apt. So the Helm command that uh, we are going to discuss about uh, later on in this video is now equal to this yum and apt command, all right? So basically, this is a package manager, another package manager for the Kubernetes. And now let's take a look at this another point that is Helm is now an official Kubernetes project and is a part of CNCF. All right, so it's a cloud native computing foundation that is a, uh, a foundation that is basically the Helm is now the official version of the official project of the Kubernetes and now it is also a part of the CNCF. The main building block of Helm based on deployments are the Helm charts. All right, so the help charts are basically the, uh, containing the packages that will basically show that how many YAML files are present in each of the package that describe a configurable set of dynamically generated Kubernetes resources. All right, and the chart can either be stored locally or fetched from a remote chart repository. All right, so the, ch uh, the chart or the uh, packages that will be uh, that will be installed will, can either be installed locally and they will be stored there or they can be fetched remotely from the uh, repositories, online repositories. And I will show you how that will work also. So just like GitHub or Docker Hub that contains the packages, the Helm has a Helm Hub, all right? That will take and install the packages from the Helm repository online, all right? So why use Helm? And here is another question that why you need to use the Helm command. So Helm is basically writing and maintaining the Kubernetes YAML manifest file for all the required Kubernetes objects can be a time-consuming issue and tedious task. All right, so writing them and managing the Kubernetes YAML manifest file for all the Kubernetes objects can be a time-consuming and a tedious task. So for the simple deployment, you would need at least three YAML files, all right? So I have shown you above that there are six YAML files, but for the simplicity, you need at least three YAML files. But let's say if you have hundreds of files, then it will be very difficult for you. So at least three YAML manifest files with duplicated and hard code values. All right, so I will show you what is the hard coded values. The hard code is basically, uh, let's say you fixed the value of the replica set to equal to three. Now it, that, that replica set will only be equal to three. So you can change them with the help of Helm also. Uh, later on in this video, I will show you that how you can uh, make this work, uh, make this work easy so that you don't need to update the hard coded values every time. Instead, you will just write a template and inside that template, the values will be updated automatically. So you don't need to uh, uh, open the manifest file every time and edit the hard coded values every time. You just need to write the value or the key and the values will be updated automatically in the uh, template. So I will show you. So you just need to keep this in mind that you would need at least three YAML files that will be used. But if you want to use hundreds of files, then that will be very difficult to create them and manage them one by one. Instead, the YAML will do it for you automatically, so you don't need to worry about them. And help simplifies the process and create a single package that can be referred to your cluster. All right, so we have discussed that the, uh, the single package will contain all the YAML files and that package will be de uh, deployed to the Kubernetes cluster at one. All right, so as a one entity, the package will be deployed to the Kubernetes cluster with only one command. So you don't need to deploy the command 
or you don't need to uh, deploy the YAML files one by one, one after one. Instead, you will pack them into a package, and that package will be deployed to the Kubernetes cluster at once. All right? So Helm Kubernetes automatically maintains the database of all versions of your releases. So when something goes wrong during the deployment, rolling back to the previous version is just one command away. So basically, and this is the uh, concept that you need to keep in mind that whenever you create uh, some kind of uh, package or you install some kind of package, then uh, a copy or a release will be automatically created for you. So Helm Kubernetes automatically maintains a database of all versions, all right? So it will maintain a database of all versions of your releases, all right? So basically, if you install some kind of package, then the release will also be uh, saved in the database that, uh, let's say that Jenkins package is installed or the Negios package is installed. That will be a release that will be saved, uh, saved in the database. And when something goes wrong then during the deployment, then rolling back to the previous version is not uh, is just one command away. So let's say if you install some kind of package, but during the deployment, the package does not install properly. All right, so what you need to do is to, with the help of this release functionality, because the release is a copy of that uh, package that will be installed, you can simply roll back to the, mm, uh, uh, to the previous version with the help of this release. Because the release is a copy of all the versions that will be present in the database, so if something wrong uh, went wrong in the uh, next command, then you can uh, go back to the previous version of an application also with the help of this release. All right? So some keywords to understand Helm. So these are some of the keywords that will be helpful for you. So the chart. So we have discussed it uh, previously. The Helm charts are simply Kubernetes YAML clusters manifest files combined into a single package that can be advertised or that can be referred to the a Kubernetes cluster. So that will be transferred to the Kubernetes cluster at once. So now let's take a look at the release that we have discussed it here. As you can see, basically the release will be a copy of the application that you want to deploy. And after that, if, you, if some error went, then you can go back to the previous version also. So chart can, be, uh, can often be installed many times. And each time it is installed, a new release is created. All right. So a chart can often be installed many times. So if, let's say, you create a Jen uh, you install Jenkins two times or three times, then for each time, the release will also be created, and that release will be saved in the database. All right? Those releases will help you to go to the next and previous state of the uh, Kubernetes if you want to. But le uh, let's say if uh, the uh, Jenkins or any uh, kind of package is crashed, then you can go to the previous version also of the Kubernetes if you want to, to make this properly work. So let's say consider a MySQL chart, all right? You can, if you can install that chart twice, let's say if you install this uh, MySQL uh, chart twice, then what it will do that each one will have its own release, which will in turn have its own release name also, all right? So Helm keeps track or keep the record of all the chart execution like install, upgrade, remove, rollback. So Helm will keep the record of each of the chart uh, that you are installing, all right? So now let's take a look at the repository. So it is showing by name that it is the location where the package can be stored or shared, all right? And it can be local or remote repository, all right? We have discussed it earlier that the repository will some, contain some kind of packages that will be present uh, either locally or remotely in the server, on the online server, all right? So let's take a look at how Helm helped us in the CICD pipeline. All right, so basically, suppose we have dev, QA, pre-production, and the production environments. So these are the four environments, let's say, that we have present in the CICD pipeline. All right, so if you don't know what is CICD pipeline that I have discussed in my previous video, you can also check them out. So, but just for the purpose that you need to keep this in mind that let's say you have four environments. The first, the development will happen, then the uh, QA testing will happen, and that the pre-production will happen, and then the production environment will, uh, will go to that, uh, the software will go to the production environment. So, for each environment, you have different number of replica sets. All right, let's say the dev contains the two replica sets, the QA contains uh, three replica sets, and the pre-production contains five replica sets, and the production contains uh, 10 replica sets. 
So you can see that the number of replica sets are different according to each of the environment. All right. So now the question arises that do we need to write the number of replica sets every time in each manifest file? All right. So there is a question that you need to keep in mind that whether, um, whether we need to uh, write the number of replica sets every time uh, in every environment or not. So to do this, to solve this problem, Helm provides you a template which will contain the empty field in which you just need to put the values according to your replica set. So what do I mean by this? Basically, the manifest file contains like, uh, the hard-coded values that we have discussed. All right. So the hard-coded values, let's say, uh, the replica set is equal to 2. That will be a hard-coded value. Similarly, the replica set is equal to 3. That will be a hard-coded value. All right. So after that, the manifest file contains these hard-coded values. So let's say if I have uh, increased the number of replica sets, so do I have to move to the manifest file every time to update the, um, to update the replica set, the number of replica sets? So the answer is no. All right. So why? Because uh, it, this will be very manual task. So you don't need to go to the uh, replica uh, manifest file every time in order to update the number of uh, replica set. So instead, what you need to do is to uh, help provides you a template for it. All right. That template will contain the key and the values that will be present in another file. All right. So let's take an example of a variable in which the variable is a key and the value of that variable is a value. All right. So you will mention the key in a template. All right. And you will mention the values of that key in another file. All right. So suppose you have hundreds of manifest files. So in order to uh, change the number of replica sets, let's say in a specific file, then it will be very difficult to find that manifest file. So what you need to do in order to uh, change the number of values, you need to create another value file or another YAML file that will contain the value values of all the replica sets and you need to just change the number of replica sets in that file. Instead of going to the manifest file every time, what you need to do is to create another file that will contain the values of the, uh, that replica set that you can change them in, an, in that file. All right? So I will show you that how you will do it. So, so there will be another file in which you just need to write the numbers that will be allocated to the replica set. All right? So what you need to do is basically the Helm will provide you a template that will contain the key and the uh, replica set or the number of replica sets will be present in another file that in which you can write the values there. All right. So in this way, you don't need to edit the YAML file every time to change the number of replica sets. You just need to open the specific file that you have created and you just need to write the uh, number of replica sets there. All right. So instead, you just need to mention the file name in the uh, manifest file that contains the value. The key will be present in the manifest and the value will be present in another file that will be called in the manifest. All right, so template engine will create the replicas that you mentioned in a file according to each of the environment. So template engine will basically perform the functionality of creating the replicas if you want to. So let's say if you want to create 10 replicas, then the template engine will create the replicas for you. All right. So let's take an example for it. So here is the API version, the deployment, the kind, the metadata, and the name of this metadata. And here is the specification. So as you can see that uh, in the previous video, I have shown you that uh, here you need to write the two or three or any kind of number. But what you need to do here is to write the values, replica count, that will basically contain, uh, that will lead you to another file and you will just need to write the two or three or five number of replicas in that file, not here also. Because you need to do, what you need to do is to uh, stop um, going to these uh, manifest files every time. So instead of it, what you need to do is to go to that another file in which you will write the values there and it will be automatically updated here. All right. So now let us take a look at the Helm architecture. So Helm is a single service or a client architecture. So before I have shown you that what is the difference between uh, Helm 3 and Helm 2, the difference between Helm 3 and Helm 2 was that, that the Helm 2 was containing the client plus the server architecture. But in the case of Helm 3, the Helm 3 only contains the client architecture.
all right so it means that only client is required and the server is not required because the kubernetes contains the r b a c or the rule based access control all right so with the uh, with the presence of this r back the server is not required now but previously the help in the helm 2 the servers were required because the r back was not present there all right but when the uh, kubernetes has uh, created this kind of functionality the r back role based access control the server is not required and only the cl uh, client is required in the helm 3 so if you don't know what is r back you can check out my kubernetes videos i have briefly explained it there all right so helm 2 had a client server architecture but, uh, but with r back r b a c in kubernetes helm 3 has come and it only requires the client architecture so client is responsible for uh, implementing helm all right so the client is responsible for uh, implementing the helm and there is no core processing uh, logic distributed among components all right so there is no uh, much ro uh, logic required if you want to distribute the components instead the architecture is very simple and only the client is required that will implement all the kind, all kind of functionalities in helm so implementation of helm is a single command line that knows that how to manage the kubernetes cluster all right so helm and its libraries both are written in golang so you do uh, you need to uh, know about this this is an uh, extra point and in previous scenario you had to write the kubectl apply to install the package that is present in the manifest file we have discussed about it that package had to contact the api server and then the package would be installed in all the nodes like this all right so basically uh, in the previous uh, in the previous um, scenario we had to write the kubectl and once the kubectl is written then the request will be going to the api server and that request will go to the nodes in order to install the package in each of the nodes so now in the helm case what it will do that first you will write the helm install let's say the jenkins and it will go to the helm client all right so what you need to do is to write the uh, this helm install jenkins command as it will go to the helm client all right so the helm client will uh, find that package in the helm registry or in the helm repository that we have discussed that it will be uh, available on the remote server all right so the package will be found in the helm registry once it is found then it will be go back to the helm client and from there the helm client will give this package to the api server and the api server will give this package to all the nodes all right so the helm client will find that package in the helm registry or repository and give it to the helm client the helm client will give that package to the api server and it will be installed on each of the nodes all right so and that's it for now i hope you like this video so if you liked it then make sure to subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions then ask those questions in the comment section below i'll be happy to answer all of them so till then goodbye